you did your master's for free, right? So kind of, yeah, I did, I did it for free, yes. My tuition fee was somebody else was paying my tuition fee. So everything was cool. So I didn't pay a single penny to University of Cincinnati. Instead, they were paying me. So I joined here uh, like five months ago and I didn't ask for any internship or any job. He automatically find one internship for me and he said, okay, Ravi, how, would you like to go to Washington next year? I said, yeah, why not? Yeah, application process, like uh, from outer perspective, it may look some complicated, but it's not that complicated actually. Target these two positions, either GRA or TA. If you get these, uh, you get uh, fully funded masters like, because they'll pay for your research, they'll pay your tuition fee, and they'll cover your insurance. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are doing good. Uh, today, I have a very special guest with me today, Ravi Kumar. Hello, everyone. Okay. Uh, he did his master's here in University of Cincinnati in material science, and currently he is pursuing a PhD in the same field. And in today's video, he will be talking about his master's journey, his challenges and life here and all that academia. So if you are an international student thinking of doing master's here in the US, this video is for you. So without any delay, let's jump right in. So hi, Robbie. Um, can you please tell us and our audience a bit about yourself? Hello, Simon. First of all, I would like to say thank you for having me here and giving me this chance to speak. So hello, everyone. I'm Ravi Kumar. Currently, I'm pursuing my PhD in material science from the Ohio State University. I did my master's in material science, same field from University of Cincinnati. Uh, I graduated last year. Mm -hmm. Oh, you did your bachelor's in India, right? Yeah, I did my... Actually, I have two master's degree. I oh. did my bachelor's in India and I did master's in physics from India. Then I came here to US. Oh, okay. So what inspired you to pursue material science? Uh, I, first of all, like, I like physics. I, wanna, I wanted to do some experiment stuff. And I was in physics background, but in physics these days, they do more of modeling, less of experiment. Material science allows you to do more of experimental work. So I chose material science after coming here. It's fun work. You do some experiment by your own. So I like that. Uh -huh. uh, okay, so you also told me you were into research and labs, right? Could you tell yes, me yes. more about that? So, so right now I'm working in one lab. It's called Lightweight Metal Lab. Basically, we all have some sort of aluminum in our houses, like maybe in our laptop, maybe soda can. They're all made of made of aluminum, right? So if we keep using them like we are using right now, we'll be out of them pretty soon. So my job is to recycle them, right? We get the recycled aluminum, but they have some sort of impurity. So we can get rid of impurity by adding something or by removing that impurity. Removing it's very expensive, so I'm working on something adding in that one so we can reuse them that's my job right now here at osu okay that sounds pretty interesting okay okay talking about your masters uh uh what what inspired you to come here in the u.s and pursue your study here so the inspiration wise i'll say you know, u.s labs are really good the education system is very systematically maintained so the course structure the lab the research support you get because research is very expensive. You can't do it on your own. You need some sponsors to do that research. And US is really good for that sponsorship to provide you money for your research. Okay, so could you also touch upon uh, your application process about how you applied, how many colleges did you apply, and what what the application process look, look like for you? Yeah, application process is like, uh, from outer perspective, it may look some complicated, but it's not that complicated, actually. First of all, you need to figure out what stream you want to go. I was very clear that I'm choosing either physics or material science. So I checked rank for all the colleges. Don't just check the, check the rank for college. Go for the department because we'll be working under department, not under entire college, right? Mm -hmm. So mine was material science. So I figured out like seven to eight colleges. That time I applied to University of Cincinnati, uh, Colorado State University, University of North Texas, Stevens Institute of Technology and uh, four more colleges. And I got uh, offer letter from, I think, five of them. Okay. Uh, three of them rejected saying, we don't have scholarship right now, but mm -hmm. five were getting scholarship. So uh, University of Cincinnati was bashed out of them. So I chose University of Cincinnati that time. Okay, talking about scholarships, you did your master's for free, right? So- Kind of, yeah, I did, I did it for free, yes. Yeah, it's so not our, usual. Our audience would be more curious to know about that part, about how did you secure a fully funded master's here? Yeah, so usually for master's, it's not like a fully funded. You get only 50% scholarship at max. Um, you need to pay minimum like uh, twenty thirty thousand dollars for your entire master's degree. But I came here for a PhD. Uh, I didn't came here for master's. So I joined as a PhD program. And for PhD, I was getting money also, and my tuition fee was somebody else was paying my tuition fee. So everything was cool. So I didn't pay a single penny to University of Cincinnati. Instead, they were paying me. 
later uh, i changed my decision i changed my phd degree to master's degree and i graduated so basically i got a free master's degree from united states yeah oh, that, that, so, that's cool. Oh, so you did not pay tuition. Uh, did you also get stipend for masters? Or yeah, I was getting stipend. Yeah, stipend, oh. and I didn't pay tuition fee. Yes, right. Do they also provide housing or something? So they give enough money that you can get housing, and they were giving insurance. So, so nothing to worry about. Oh, they even give insurance for you. Yeah, health insurance. They will cover health insurance. Yeah. That's so nice. Health insurance is so expensive. It's expensive, very expensive. If you pay on from your own pocket. <laughs> Um, so, Ravi, what were the prerequisites? Yes, did you do any IELTS or TOEFL or GRE that's required for master's? Yeah, uh, actually, I did all of them. <laughs> so, like, when I was applying, I did not know what's compulsory and what's mandatory here. Uh, mm -hmm. So, I did GRE, uh, the general test, and I did TOEFL for the English test. And these two, were, like, were important at that time. But after COVID, there's no more nece uh, necessity of GRE. If you don't give GRE, it doesn't make any effect on your profile, but you should have one English test. It can be IELTS, it can be IELTS, IELTS English test, or TOEFL, or PTE, or Duolingo. All 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 exams are acceptable. Just you just choose any one English exam and submit your score. That's it. You don't need to give GRE these days. Oh, okay. So GRE is not mandatory, right? So yeah, it's not mandatory. That question of whether to give or not GRE. So yeah, it's very confusing question. People still think GRE is mandatory, but most of the university, like I'll say 80% of the university doesn't require GRE at all. Oh, okay. That's a huge number, 80%. Okay, so things have changed after COVID. Yes, after COVID. Also, okay. you did your master's in physics back in India, right? Yes. You did a master's here. Uh, how did you find the education system different here than in India? Uh, it's very different, I'll say. It's more systematic. Things are like arranged already. You don't need to struggle for things. Uh, you have more choices here. In India, like I I did my master's from a very like nice institute. It was a very famous institute in India, NIT Manipur. But we have very limited choice of number of courses. Like only two courses are going on that semester and you, you need to take both of them. You don't have choice if you want to take some other course from some other professor, you don't have that choice. But here, like you at one time, you have like 10 courses going on. And you can choose, okay, I, I want to do these three courses or these two courses. So you have more choice and you can choose your professor also. Okay, I want to do study under this professor. So you have more flexibility here. But in India, you don't get that flexibility. Um, how are the research that you do here in the lab that you were talking about? How is it different from India? Hmm, that's also very different because I told you it's, research is all about funding. So if you don't have good funding. So here they have generous amount of funding. So we don't need to think about, okay, this equipment is expensive should we buy or not if that's important for your research everybody will give the approval you just buy that equipment you do the research when i was back in india so if i need to do some experiment i'll just make samples but i'll send my sample to some other institute or some other company they will do the like experiment on that and they will send that to me the results but here everything you need to do it on your own you make your sample you have your equipment in your lab you go there to the experiment bring the result read the result read the result and publish them but in india you have multiple people working for you but here you have to do everything on your own because it's your research. So you are meant to do work for your research, nobody else. Mm -hmm. That's a big difference. Yeah, it's a lot of independence. You come here. Yes. Okay, um, okay did you also do any part-time jobs here in college or were you all into research? Yeah, uh, I don't do any part-time job because uh, I told you I'm a research assistant, so I get money for that. So I'm not supposed to work other than my research lab. Um, some people work part-time if they don't get uh, research assistantship or teaching assistantship. But I'll say if you are looking for any part-time, find teaching position because they'll be very helpful for your career. You get to teach and you get money also at the same time. So don't just go for part outside part-time. Just go for research or teaching options. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's helpful. That'll help you to go do well in a grad school or later find jobs in your field, right? Yes, absolutely right. Okay, next up, we would like to talk about the challenges. What challenges did you feel landing here in the U.S.? So, uh, U.S. is like very comfortable, to be honest. Like, it's not like uh, we don't get food, we don't get good houses. Everything is online, so you can pretty much find everything. Challenges, uh, there can be some challenges, like cultural change. Like, uh, I come from a very small hometown. It's Hanumangar, Rajasthan, actually. So we don't have that many big colleges or that many big universities. So everything was new for me, like technology-wise. And 
So that was kind of a bit challenging, but I adapted everything very quickly. Uh, at least I think that I'm not sure if I did a great job in that. But uh, I didn't find any like major challenges uh, other than cultural change and language. I uh, yeah, I come from small hometown, so we are not uh, habitual to speak of English. We speak Hindi only or Punjabi, mm -hmm. but we don't speak English there. So that was a challenge for me. Mm -hmm. But I I don't think that's a challenge for uh, everybody else. Everybody is pretty much familiar with English and they speak good English. Yeah. I think uh, many international students would have the questions about doing a free master's, either getting research assistantships or graduate yeah. or working under the professor. Or do you like to talk? Yeah, yeah I think uh, like I did PhD. Uh, I was there for PhD, so my fees and uh, everything was waived off. But if you go even for master's degree directly, you should apply to those universities who are giving research assistantship to master's students. Not every university does that, but good university does that. So that's why you need to find better university with better ranking. Because if they have better ranking, they have more support from the government. So you know, search for GRE position, graduate research assistant, or may you if you make a teaching assistant, that also good. So target these two positions, either GRA or TA. If you get these, uh, you get uh, fully funded masters. Like because they'll pay for your research, they'll pay your tuition fee, and they'll cover your insurance. Yeah. I'll... Keep these two points in mind. Yeah, I love the research part. How they fund for research here in the US. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's pretty comfortable. Like even sometimes you just need to find a good advisor because your advisor will find your funding. You don't need to find, you don't directly contact to anybody that give me money. Your advisor will contact because he has the contacts, not you. So you need to find a good advisor with money. Um okay, okay. That's one yeah. cool hack that you need to be cool with your advisor and be yeah. with them. Okay, so currently you are doing your PSD, right? How's that going? What you're doing? So I joined this semester only, like it's been only five months here at OSU, but it's going really good because uh, my new advisor, uh, he has a strong industry and academic background. So he works with both industry and academic. So we have good funding. We are working with uh, Tesla, Honda, GM, GE. So he has all sorts of connections, which is very helpful for me because if he has connection, uh, I automatically have connections. Uh, so I joined here uh, like five months ago and I didn't ask for any internship or any job. He automatically find one internship for me and he said, okay, that will help. Would you like to go to Washington next year? I said, yeah, why not? Didn't make too many efforts, too much efforts for that. My advisor did that all the part for me. So that's good. So that's why advisor is very important. Okay, so networking really helps. Yes. Right? Talking about networking, uh, did you go to any conferences or what about career fairs here, Ravi? Uh, I attended lots of conferences. Actually, in two years, I went to three so, yeah, three different conferences, Pittsburgh, Columbus, and Cleveland. Mm -hmm. So yeah, conferences are very important because if you need to get if if you need to find a job, if you need to find next position, maybe PhD or master's, whatever, you need to go to conferences because you meet uh, people working in your profession. Mm -hmm. And conferences are usually paid off. Your university will pay for conference. You won't pay anything. So it's better to go and you get in get a new holiday break and you meet new people also. Enjoy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think conference is a good idea to find a job. Okay, talking about the university pay, uh, paying your confidence, how do you do that? Uh, first, you need to have your advisor's approval that I'm going to this conference. Either I'm going to present my work or I want to meet this specific person. He's working in our field and he's a good guy. So either you should have some goal. Either you are presenting something or you're going to see, see someone. So okay. for my talk, for me, it was presenting. I Both time I presented and one time I made some experimental stuff and I went to show that. So I went thrice. And I asked my advisor, I'm going to show this work. He said, yeah, this is a good idea. You will meet new people there. That's good for our work. Yeah. Because we, we work on collaboration, right? If you don't meet people, how will we collab? So our goal, go there, find collaboration. So yeah, I did there. Um, yeah, I went there and I asked my advisor. And he signed some form. And then we applied to university. I'm going to this conference. They already have settled up everything. They have some online forms. You apply there. I'm going to this conference. You give some proof, some photo that I was there. And then they reimburse all the money. In the beginning, you pay everything, but later they reimburse everything. Oh, okay. So you need to be proactive into getting reach of your advisors. and Yes, yes. But most of the time, your professor is more proactive. He will tell you, okay, this conference is there because he's more much experienced, experienced than you, right? He'll, he'll tell, okay, this conference is coming this month. Do you want to go? Or you should be ready for this conference. It's up to him most of the part. So if you're proactive, he'll be proactive. Yeah, yeah so you need to have a good connection with your professor that's where you're definitely at. definitely i have seen people not going anywhere they're sitting in the lab because they don't have good connection and they're just sitting in the lab all the time mm -hmm. and that should not be your goal your goal should be meeting people finding job opportunity finding more collaboration work something like that so be proactive have a good bonding with your advisor mm -hmm. do some reasonable argue, uh, 
reasonable arguments if you ever need to do but don't just fight mm -hmm. okay that that really helps next up uh, what was the most thing that you miss about india or home uh two things family like friends comes in family and food mm -hmm. that's the most uh, two things i miss i miss a lot i cook by myself but homemade food cooked by somebody else <laughs> there's a different thing yeah. what about your friends or girls here it's actually good i never thought that i will have so many friends like i have you are my friend now see we met in cincinnati and i have so many friends i made a good number of friends here you just need to network do networking you just need to go to all the events almost every university in us organize so many events almost every day some events is some event is going on so go to those events and you meet new people you do networking that's how we make friends and that's that's right okay i think we're coming to the end part okay what advice do you have for upcoming international students who are planning to do their masters or PhD here in US? Um, I'll say find better colleges. Don't go for like just colleges who give more admission chances. No, go for the, apply to colleges which have better rank or maybe better research support. Because if you are doing masters or PhD, ultimately you will do some research, and you need good money to do research. So find better colleges with better colleges who have sorry. So find better colleges and your advisor should be good. He should have good connection. Mm -hmm. So nice advisor, nice college. That's two things. Okay. And if you if you get that, then ask for GRA or TA position because that will give you money. Uh, okay. So did you try considering reaching out to any of the professors before you went to OSU? Yes. Actually, uh, before applying to OSU, I reached to my professor directly. Uh, my current advisor, um, I emailed him directly. Hey, this is Ravi Kumar, and I'm a student of Dr. Eric at uh, the University of Cincinnati. I really like your work. Uh, is there any chance I could collaborate with you? Or I can like help in your research, be a part of your team. And he knew my advisor already. Mm -hmm. So here comes. So I did not apply to the university directly. I just emailed him, and he saw my profile, and he saw my past advisor's name, and he knew him. He had a good impression. And he came and quickly said, hey, I know Eric, and I trust his words. Okay, why not having an interview, 10 minutes interview? So it was a short call. He didn't ask anything formal. He just asked, hey, what do you want to do? What's your future plan? Something like that. He just wanted to know my intention. And it was pretty straightforward. And he said, okay, come. Let's do it as soon as possible. And I came in January. So yeah, just approach. Approach people, do networking. That's really important in the US. Without networking, you're nothing. Mm-hmm. Okay, that was also helpful advice. Yeah, you need to be proactive and networking. Yes. Evolves. So thank you, Ruby, for your amazing time and all your advice today. Thank you for coming here and doing this collaboration with me. And I hope you guys too found this video useful. And you can comment down what you like to see next and we can have a next collab. Uh, till then, goodbye. You guys have an amazing summer break. Goodbye. Thank you, Ruby. Thank you, Simon. Thank you, everyone, for watching this video. Mm -hmm. Yep, bye.